So let's dive in. Um, I should one thing I should have also mentioned too. Worksheets will always be there. You know, at the first very week, this the purple worksheet that you got today. That worksheet isn't going to be due until the 28th. So it's not due this week, Friday. It'll be due next week, Friday. Right. So we got that going on. So let's talk about let's contrast and compare linear functions to exponential functions. Now you don't have to write this slide down or the next slide. You don't have to write those two down, let's just talk about it. Okay? A linear function has a rate of change that is constant. Okay? That's what this box is saying. Change by equal differences over equal intervals. So if I go one to the right in a linear function, I'm going to go up or down the same every single time I go one to the right. So if I go one to the right and I go down three, that one to the right and down three is going to always be the same, all the way through my entire function. Yeah. An exponential function, the easiest way to describe an exponential function is the rate of change changes. Okay. There isn't a constant rate of change. It's always changing. Okay? It's usually going up by a percentage rate, which is what it normally is going up. Okay? Sometimes that percentage rate is quite steep or a lot, and then it would exponentially grow much faster. Sometimes it's very slow. Okay? So those two, the comparison of those two in picture form would look like this. Both of those functions, or both of these functions, have an initial value of 100. The one on the left is constantly changing. Or it's, it's, it's a linear function, so if I go to the right one, I'm going up 5. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 5. The one on the right is changing by 5%. So yes, it has the same growth as the initial, because if I go one to the right, I go up five, but then after that, that rate of change is always changing, and in fact, it's growing. So that way out here on the right-hand side of this right graph, we might be going up by 100 if I go one to the right, or 300. Okay? It's always going to keep growing. That curve is What these two functions would actually look like in terms of their equations is this would be y equals 5x plus 100. That's a linear function, y equals mx plus b. You've seen a bunch of them. You're going to see a bunch more of them. This one is going to be y equals 100 times 1.05. With an exponential function, the variable is now in the exponents. Okay. You want to write that down. Exponential function has its variable in the exponent. An exponential function is not just a function that has an exponent. You've seen functions already this year with that have exponents in them. Okay? Those were not exponential functions. An exponential function, the variable is in the exponent. So there are two types of equations here in exponential and logarithmic one. And the nice thing is, 
is they are both inverses of each other. Okay? They're both inverses of each other. So an exponential equation is going to look like y equals a times b to the x power. That is an exponential function. The variable is in the exponent. Therefore, it is an exponential function. A logarithmic equation is going to look like y equals log base b of some number, which we're going to call, actually I'll put it as x. We'll call it the argument here. A natural log is a log base e would look like y equals ln of x. So the base in a natural log is e, the exponential number. Some people call it Euler's number. So those are the two types of equations that we're going to run into in the next couple of weeks. <coughs> this next slide is the most important slide. This slide. You're going to want to, I told them that earlier today, you're going to want to put four stars. This is a four star slide here. Okay? So you definitely want to put some stars by this information. <clears throat> and I like that. Fix on the bottom too, but we'll fix that in a minute. Here. Okay. So, like I said, they are inverses of each other. So if you have a logarithmic equation, and you'll know it's a logarithmic equation because you'll see the word log in it. Okay? If you have a logarithmic equation, you solve it by putting it into exponential form. If you have an exponential equation where your variable is in the exponent, you solve it by putting it in logarithmic form. Okay? So that's why this slide is so important. You solve these equations, these functions, by putting them in the opposite form. Okay? So we've got that. Now, there are two rules that come along with flippity floppity betwixt those two forms. The first rule is that B and the argument are both positive, always. Your base has to be positive, so therefore your argument has to be positive. ARG stands for argument. Okay. The second one, the second rule is that B can't equal 1 or 0. Those are the two rules that go along with exponential and logarithmic. B and the argument are positive, and B can't be 1 or 0. Okay? Love it. Okay? So, part of exponentials and logs is you got to be able to rewrite things into the other form. Okay? So, 
what you need to be able to do is go from exponential, which has a base and an exponent, and an exponent equaling the argument to and fro between that and log base of the argument equals the exponent. Okay? So you need to be able to go from blue to green, and from green to blue. Okay? So first off, number one here, that's a logarithmic equation, a logarithmic statement, because I see the word log. Okay? So since I see the word log, that means I'm already automatically in the blue. It says rewrite it in the other form. That means I've got to write it in the green form. Okay? So what is my base? Nine. What is my exponent? What is my exponent? Terry, what's my exponent? This way we'll keep you awake. Gloria, can you read in blue? It's 3 half. Yeah, exactly. Because that's what EXP needs on the, on the blue. Net. See, you were falling asleep. That's why I was trying. I know, I know, but you weren't you weren't doing a very good job of it, just so you know. Okay? So it's three halves. Okay? And that's gonna equal my argument. What's my argument? Twenty-seven. So that those two are equivalent statements. Just one's written in logarithmic form, the original problem. And one's written in exponential form. What we just did. Okay. You quick try number two now. Base. Exponent. Argument. So it should look like that. Number three, let's do it together quickly. Base, four, exponent, two, argument, 16. Okay. All of those, just so you're aware, and this will come up later, all of those are true statements on all six accounts so far. Those are all true statements. Okay. 9 to the 3 half power is 27. Log base 9 of 27 is 3 half. 7 cubed is 343. Log base 7 of 343 is 3. 4 squared is 16. Log base 4 of 16 is 2. Okay. That will come up later. These are all true statements. Okay. Now this one is a little different because now we're dealing with natural law. Okay. Natural log here is, remember, log base e okay? but we never write log base e. Okay? We always write natural log. Okay? So if you wrote log base e, or I like to call it loge, okay? my favorite seating area that used to be Miller Park, now it's American Family Field, okay, is the loge level. Okay. So we don't write it like that. We write it as natural log. But that now allows us to say this is E squared equals X. Base of E, exponent of 2, argument of X.
questions on that? What do you mean? On this one, we're going from blue to green. So we're working to the left on our formula that we quadruple start. No? Now it says, now let's rewrite it in logarithmic form. Well, so now when we go to logarithmic form, the first thing that we're going to start with is, since I've got a base that's a number, I'm going to start with log. And the nice part about the word log is the letter G. The letter G has that little hook underneath it. Okay? The nice part about that hook is that's where your base goes. Your base is written as a subscripted number. Exponents are written as superscripted numbers. The base is written as a subscripted number. So your base should be, oops, I almost made a goofy letter right there, or what I don't even know what that was. Your base should be the same size and right next to the hook of your G. Okay. So that's where log base 7. My argument is 49, my exponent is 2. So 7 squared equals 49, written in logarithmic form, is log base 7 of 49 equals 2. Work with me on the next one. Well, I'll get you started. Log. What's my base? Nope. Five, because it's the number that has the exponent to it, or the term that has the exponent. So five is my base. Log base five. Of. What's my argument? Y equals my exponent. X is my exponent. You try those two. I'm actually going to do the fourth one first. Okay. Log. What's my base? Of equals. Okay. Love it. Now, everybody got that? Okay. All right. Now let's go back to number three. In my brain. I'm thinking of this as 3 equals, actually I shouldn't say it. I'm thinking of it as 3. I was thinking of something different. I was thinking of something goofy. Okay? So in my brain, I want to say this is log base what? E. What's my argument? 3, so it's of 3, equals what's my exponent? X. Okay. But I don't write this one. If you write this, you will get it marked wrong. Okay? Because that is natural law. Love it. All is well. Okay. So all of those that I had in here on this one, too, are true statements. Okay. 8 to the 2 thirds power equals 4. Log base 8 of 4 is 2 thirds. 7 squared is that. All is good. Okay. 
So the reason I say that is because if you ever had to evaluate a log, for instance, log base 2 of 16. Okay. So if we ever had to evaluate that log, what a log does is, or what this is asking, is what exponent goes on to to get 16. That's what you're asking yourself. What exponent? Logs are exponent binders. Logs are exponent binders. So what exponent must go on to to get 16? Okay. And the nice thing is, is a lot of the times, it's something nice and easy. Okay? So in this particular case, that is 4. If I multiply 2 4 times, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. Okay. So this one, when we evaluate this one, we would say log base 2 of 16, that's 4. Okay. And that's nice and dandy, and that's awesome. Okay. But the problem is, is that sometimes you might get this, log base 3 of 8. Well, 3 to the first power is 3, 3 squared is 9, so there's not an 8 in there. So what we have to do in that case is we have to use our next great formula, and that is the change of base formula. Okay. The change of base formula says that if you have a log base C of some number, we'll call it A in this case, you can do two things. Because log without a base, so if it's just log, that means log base 10. And log base 10 is on every single scientific calculator known to man. Okay. Most of you have a calculator with a log button. Okay. And that log button, it just says log, what that means is log base 10. Okay. Natural log, that's log base E. Also on all scientific calculators. Okay. Problem is, is when you get something like this, what exponent do I put on 3 to get 8? I don't know. So let's figure it out. Okay. So what this is saying then is you would have log base 3 of 8 would be equal to log base 10 of 8, or just log, divided by log base 10, or just log of 3. And we can do that on our calculator. Or, if you're a natural log fan, maybe the natural log of 8, divided by the natural log of 3. Okay? So let's do that on your calculator right now. Let's find the natural log of or excuse me, the log, log base 3 of 8. Now, for some of you, most of you don't have a Casio calculator. Okay? For those of you that do, you got a leg up. Because when you hit the log, log oh, you're, you have the old style calculator. Yeah. I'll talk to Luca. Luca figured out how to get it. 
Casio calculators allow you to just punch it in as log base three of these. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So for everybody else, you're going to take log eight. And now notice how it opens up a set of parentheses for you. So you got to close that set of parentheses first. Then you're going to go divide by log base or log three. Close and then hit equal. And you should get this. <clears throat> yep. What do you know you need to close? Log three. Yeah. What don't you get? You got to do log of 8. So log 8, close parentheses. Divide. Log 3, close parentheses, equal. And you should get 1.8927. something, 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 something. Normally, We'll round to three decimal places when we're dealing with one. Okay. Okay. Now that's the exponent that to put on three, and if I do that, I get eight. Okay. So you evaluate for me log base three of thirty-four and log base thirty-four of three. So I got log base 3 on this first one, I got 3.20983. On this one, I got 0 0.31154. If you didn't get those, the first thing that I would check is to make sure that you close your set of parentheses on the first log. Okay. That would be the first thing I would check. Because if you don't close that, order of operations <clears throat> goes all hitting off. Questions, comments, concerns, clarifications. You now have enough information to do the entire front side of the week 1920 worksheet.